After the departure of the Soyuz T-15 crew on July 16, 1986, the Mir space station remained unoccupied for months, only one of its simple computers keeping it alive. To keep the station from falling back to Earth, the Soviets launched an unmanned cargo ship, Progress 27, on a Soyuz U rocket. Two days later, Progress 27 boosted Mir's altitude while it waited for the launch of the second main expedition to Mir, EO-2. Soyuz TM-2 launched atop a Soyuz U rocket from Bankanor Cosmodrome on the 5th of February 1987 without incident. After the standard two-day transfer orbit, cosmonauts Yuri Romanenko and Alexander Levikin docked with the front port of Mir. The crew quickly got to work getting the station up and running and unloading Progress 27. A few weeks later, Progress 27 undocked and departed the station. Progress 28 arrived in March, delivering food, mail, and equipment. After being unloaded, Progress 28 refueled the station and gave it another boost. The EO-1 crew then unceremoniously turned Progress into a trash can. After less than a month docked to Mir, Progress 28 left the aft port of the station, leaving it clear for the upcoming launch of the first module, the Cavant. The Cavant was an 11-ton space station module that contained scientific experiments for astrophysical observations and material science experiments. It was used to conduct research into the physics of active galaxies and to study distant stars and galactic events. To allow it to maneuver and dock with the station, Cavant was linked with a functional service module based on a TKS design. On March 31, 1987, the unit launched on a proton rocket and after a successful launch began aligning its orbit with the station. On April 5th, the IGLA approach system on the Cavant began homing in on Mir's aft port. About 200 meters out, the IGLA system on Cavant lost its dock on the aft port of the IGLA antenna on Mir. Cavant began drifting towards the station. The cosmonauts watched from within Soyuz TM-2 as the unit passed within 10 meters of the station. The Cavant unit drifted away from Mir until it was 400 kilometers away. Ground control then guided it back for a second docking attempt on April 9th. This time the system kept the lock and Cavant achieved a soft dock. However, the probe unit on Cavant's docking port couldn't fully retract and it prevented a hard docking. While the ground crew discussed possible solutions, the station couldn't move. The probe of the Cavant would wobble loosely in Mir's aft port drogue unit, and the cosmonauts could hear it banging from inside the station. Two days later, on April 11th, Romanenko and Levikin exited Mir to take a look and see if they could identify or even fix the problem. When they got to the aft port, they discovered what it was. There was a foreign object lodged in the docking unit. A bit surprised, the crew figured it was a trash bag left behind after they had loaded Progress 28 with trash. Ground Control ordered Cavant to retract its probe, which allowed the cosmonauts to pull the bag free and toss it into space. After three hours outside the station, 
Another command from the ground, and the crew watched as Kavant slowly closed with Mir. The next day, the FSM undocked with Kavant. Kavant's open port was now Mir's aft port, ready for a progress cargo ship. The EO-2 crew entered Kavant on April 13th and began unloading equipment into the core module. Over the next few days and weeks, the crew prepped the station and its new module for specifically designed scientific equipment and experiments. Progress 29 arrived on April 23rd and had no issues docking with Kavant's open port. It stayed there until May 11, 1987. The crew unloaded Progress 29 and prepared for another big EVA. Having gotten Kavant docked, and after conducting several scientific observations, the Soviets acknowledged that Mir was short on electricity. The EO-2 crew spent most of May conducting medical experiments and Earth resource photography, activities which required little electricity. In late May, Progress 30 arrived with fresh supplies. On June 13th, the EO-2 crew exited Mir's multiport node for the first of two EVAs to install a third solar panel array delivered on Kavant. The crew found that there wasn't enough room in the multiport node for two suited cosmonauts, the main boom, and the first two sections of the new array. So to get more space, Levikin and Romaninko sealed the hatch between the docking module and the orbital module of Soyuz TM-2 and left the hatch between the multiport node and the orbital module open. This basically made an extended airlock. One cosmonaut worked outside, while the other handed out the needed parts. The main boom of the array was an extendable girder like the one assembled outside Salyut 7. After two hours of working to secure the canister to the station, the crew returned inside. On a second EVA three days later, on June 16, 1987, the crew spent over three hours installing the remainder of the solar array, attaching the electrical connections, and extending it to its full length. The additional array brought Mir's total power capacity to 11.4 kilowatts. On July 19, 1987, Progress 30, now filled with trash, departed the station and burned up in the atmosphere. With the added power from the new solar panel, the EO-2 crew continued conducting experiments on Kavant. Most notably, the crew conducted studies and observations of supernova 1987A in the Large Magellanic Cloud. The cosmonauts examined the exploding star over 115 sessions between June and September of 1987. On July 24, 1987, Soyuz TM-3 arrived at the station and docked with Kavant. The new crew included Syrian guest cosmonaut Mohamed Faris, who observed Syria while the crew conducted materials processing experiments. The two Soyuz ships would stay docked to Mir for just five days. On July 29th, Ferris and EO-2 crewmate Alexander Viktorenko and EO-1 crew member Alexander Levikin returned to Earth in Soyuz TM-2. The next day, remaining cosmonauts Alexandrov and Romenko entered Soyuz TM-3 and flew it around to the forward port, clearing the aft port for the next progress flight. Just a few days later on August 3rd, Progress 31 arrived, stayed docked at the aft port of the station, became a trash can, and departed on September 21st. Progress 32 arrived on September 26th, and in November conducted maneuvers studying ways of reducing the amount of fuel used during approach and docking operations. Progress 32 left Mir on November 17th, 1987, and was replaced by Progress 33 just a few days later. From November 23rd to December 19th, 1987, Progress 32 would do what all good Progress spacecraft did. It would deliver supplies, refuel the station, give it a boost, become a dumpster, undock, and burn up. A few days before Christmas 1987, Soyuz TM-4 docked with Mir, carrying the EO-3 crew. The crew consisted of Vladimir Titov and Musa Minarov, 
their stay in space of 366 days would set a new spaceflight record. Also along with the crew was Buran test pilot Anatoly Levchenko on his first spaceflight. As before, the two Soyuz ships stayed docked to the station for just a short time. And on December 29, 1987, Romanenko, who had set a new space endurance record, and Alexandrov, together with Levchenko, returned aboard Soyuz TM-3 to Earth. For the next period, Mir would become the location of the human space flights of the Intercosmos program. Beginning in 1978, crewed Intercosmos missions enabled 14 non-Soviet cosmonauts to participate in Soyuz space flights until 1988. The program was responsible for sending into space the first citizen of a country other than the USA or the USSR, Vladimir Remek of Czechoslovakia. It also included the first black and Hispanic person, Arnaldo Mendez of Cuba, and the first Southeast Asian person in space, Pham Tuan of Vietnam. Countries outside the Soviet bloc also participated in Intercosmos. Indeed, the French spationaut Jean-Luc Chrétien flew on two separate Soyuz flights. The Soviet Union also made offers of joint crewed spaceflight on a commercial basis to the United Kingdom, Japan, and Finland, which resulted in the first British and Japanese cosmonauts. This international cooperation in space would be the goal of Mir for the next two years. But then, it was time to begin building it again starting with Kavant 2.